Hi everyone and thanks for taking a little bit of time out. I'd encourage you, please watch this. I'll separate between the individual salary and wages to business so you won't have to watch things you don't have to. Um, but uh, but I encourage you to take five minutes out of your time. I'll be as quick as I can. First of all, I want to thank everybody who, um, who used our services during the year. We appreciate your custom. It's been an extraordinary year with COVID-19. And for those that are still waiting on jobs, thank you for your patience. Uh, we are going to get them out as just as soon as we can and you have got priority number one on there So but thank you very much everyone who's used our services throughout the year. We appreciate it very very much uh, Obviously our livelihoods depend on you and we're it's our pleasure to be of service to you And so um, but just to bring you up to speed with a couple of changes that'll happen this year um, So don't forget about waiting for your group certificate as at 30 June and as soon as it clocks over 1st of July with single touch payroll Assuming all employers are up to date with that uh, you won't need a group certificate this year so it should come in pretty much straight away um, so don't hang around waiting for that you can uh, make appointments straight away with the appointment side of things uh, with COVID I understand some people may be reticent to come in if that's the case make a phone interview you can book online to uh, to make a normal interview interview where we're face to face if it's a phone interview please ring up and make it a point we'll just section in it'll probably take about 15 to 20 minutes uh, of your time on the phone and obviously we'll work beyond that but I mean that'll be all the time that you'll need and that way you can stay COVID free or whatever it is you're chasing there uh, so just be keep that in mind yeah, like I say you can't do that through the website but if you ring up we'll allocate the time from there okay so a couple of things you will need please don't take for granted that we're going to have your uh, interest income uh, make sure you ring the banks. There's a couple of new things. They've got an interest, new, uh, new income street schedule that goes in the returns this year. So we are going to need things like uh, your account numbers and the number of account holders along with all your normal details. Remember, it's for the 1920 year. Okay. Also with div dividends, same thing. If you've received dividends, uh, please bring your dividend slips with you. It, they don't always pick them up on the data match, but the new income schedule is collecting more data. Surprise, surprise. So we need off that the reference number, which is what you're going to have on your dividend slips. So we are going to need those and also the number of account holders, which should be evident on those dividend slips. So please bring those in so we've got those as well. Uh, that'll speed things up for yourself. Um, also, if you've uh, not kept a logbook in the last five years, please keep a logbook. If you've bought a new car or something like that, get a logbook, 12 continuous weeks. Um, if you don't have one, you can drop in, we give you one or some of like that. Otherwise, use the ATO app that's on there that's free so you can use it on your phone. Those things I would definitely put in place. The ATO is getting very active, if you like, in the audit space. And so we want all of these things put together. For superannuation, here's another one. We had a couple of people that got bounced or uh, we had to get quickly onto before they got bounced by the ATO because they had made contributions to their superannuation fund, uh, but they had never filled in a notice of intent to claim. Or if they've done that, like some one of the cases they had done that, but they hadn't received an acknowledgement from their fund to say, yes, we acknowledge that you're going to claim that as a as a as a superannuation deduction. Now, if you're getting it straight out from your employer, you don't need to worry about that. Okay, if it's salary sacrifice, you don't need to worry about that. If you put an additional superannuation contribution in, then you need to make sure you have that notice of intent uh, lodged with your super fund. I would do it, ring the fund. If, you, if they don't send it out to you by first week in July, ring them up, get that, shoot that off to them and when you come in bring their acknowledgement we've we've acknowledged that we've received your intent to claim this amount and all that sort of thing we'll need that okay we make a declaration to say yes we have it before we do that so if you're in that boat please do that also uh, be aware that if you've got a total super balance that's under 500,000, your limit may not be 25,000 this year because they started something new in 2019 where your unused amount, say you only made $20,000 in contributions in 2019, so there was 5,000 that you didn't use. In the 1920 year, your limit's not 25,000, but 25,000 plus the unused amount from the previous year. 30,000. So if you're going to try and squeeze in some superannuation contributions, you may want to look at that uh, this year, okay, just to check what your contributions were last year. That's across all funds though, so just be aware of that. Also, uh, if your spouse earns less than 40,000, that's including 
uh, salary sacrifice super report all fringe benefits in there as well uh, there's the spouse contribution that you can make <coughs> which is a thousand dollar amount um, uh, with a, uh, a three thousand dollar amount sorry with a 18 um, percent rebate on that so uh, that'll get you up to 540 18 percent of your money's pretty good so if you're in that situation uh, either give us a call check with the ATO check with your super fund and it may be worth doing if that's the case if that suits you also um, to get the co-contribution off the government uh, you need to uh, to avert less than 38,564 in order to get the full amount and it phases out at 53,000 so if you're under 53,564 you'll get some of the co-contribution don't put any more than a thousand dollars in you don't claim it as a tax deduction you get the co-contribution from the government of that uh, as to 50% of that so and at least the other qualifying factors there is 10% of your income has to have come from either employment or carrying on a business so if you're just investment income only don't do that you won't qualify okay so uh, I think that's all that we'll need there obviously private health insurance we need if you've got a rental property uh, make sure you bring all the details in that there's a new multiple rental property schedule that's that's uh, with the ATO there as well main things we need there is the, either the real estate uh, year-end statement there uh, also your loan interest for the year okay then and if it's only been rented for part of the year we don't want the whole year in we just want the months that are relevant okay obviously your rates insurance pest control repairs and maintenance all that stuff in there as well um, so yeah cleaning advertising for new tenants all that gear we're going to need body call fees so make sure you bring in that main thing is there's make sure the interest that seems to be the main thing that gets missed there bring that in as well so that we've got those going on there all right so that's probably all that's needed there um, for, for salary and wage clients. So if that's you, obviously if you're in managed funds as well, we want to wait until you receive the year-end statements, which are funny, they go come out in July, August, mainly in September, October there, so you might need to wait a little bit for those. Other than that, that's all you need to know for salary and wage. If you're a business client, please hang on for a few more minutes so that we can, uh, we can knuckle down just a few extra things for you. All right, all the best for the tax year for those salary and wage earners. We look forward to catching up in the next few months. And uh, other than that, with the business clients, be aware also the depreciation uh, limits, the asset write-off thing. If you bought an asset uh, 11th of March uh, 2020, uh, before that, the limit was 30000 up to $30,000, okay, and then from that date on 12th of March onwards, it's $150,000. You buy a new or a used asset, something on those lines, for under $150,000, you're going to write the whole amount off. Now, just a word of caution on this, okay, because with this write-off limit at the end of the financial year, 30th of June 2020, they, they were supposed to go back down to 1,000. It's gone all, they've extended it up until 31st of December uh, 2020. So you've got the next six months to do it. Now, have a think about it if you're going to buy an asset because under 150,000, this is a COVID year, your turnover may not have been so good for this year. I don't know, maybe it's better. It seems to be two speeds out there. So uh, maybe your turnover has come off a little bit. If it has, and you've got a general pool. If your general pool of depreciation is less than 150,000, that's going to get written off completely in this year. So you may not need that asset purchase in this year. And maybe in the next year, if turnover starts bouncing back, you might need it in that year. So just have a think about it before you start laying out all the money in this year, uh, because your circumstances may well be different um, so either give us a call before then or have a think about it yourself and see see what fits but be aware that if you've got a general pool that's under 150,000 check your balance sheet that we gave you for the last year if it's under 150,000 then that's going to get written off completely which may take your earnings down to diddly squat okay so be aware of that okay also when you think 150,000 woo, we're going to buy a big car be aware that the cars are capped at the luxury car limit of $57,581. So you buy a Merc for $150 grand, you will only get depreciation, you'll only get the immediate write-off for $57,581. The rest of it won't be. Okay, so just be aware of the different assets that you're buying there. Okay, I think I've covered off everything that we need to cover off there. Also, another thing that applies from 1st of January 2020, welcome to Big Brother. Um, if you're doing a lot of business with cash 
I'm not talking here about electronic funds transfer from bank account to bank account, but they've brought in a, a, that it's an offence to use $10,000 worth of cash, okay, in a cash transaction. So if you're used to working in that way, then you're going to have to change things up because it's an now an offence to do that and the fines range anywhere from $12,500 through to $63,000 and possible two-year uh, imprisonment on these things. Uh, welcome to Big Brother. So, um, but nonetheless, this is the law, so we've got to, you've got to try and comply with it. Now, for those of you who are immediately thinking, OK, well, I've got a transaction of $30,000 here. I know what I do. I'll pay my plumber. Nine nine thousand nine hundred, nine thousand nine hundred, nine thousand nine hundred, and top up the payment after that. All those will be under ten thousand. Will be sweet. No, it's not. If you have multiple payments on a one transaction, that's counted as one transaction. You'll be over, and both parties may be fined in that case. And so, just be aware of this ten thousand limit is now in play. And so, uh, if cash only. Like I say, don't panic about making a uh, over ten thousand dollar transfer from your bank or anything like that, electronic funds transfer, no problem, uh, but cash, uh, they assume you're a drug runner. <laughs> so, uh, so that's where we are. Anyway, look, thank you very much for your time. I don't want to overload you with information, but any queries, give us a call. Happy to help. For those of you whose jobs are not out, please be patient. Uh, we're, we're doing our best. We really are. It's been an extraordinary year. I know it's been an extraordinary year for you. I hope and pray that everything has gone well for you and your family health-wise and with financials. I hope everything goes well both in this year to come. Look forward to catching up with you. Any queries, give us a bell. Hooroo. Cheers.